How about now? It helps when you plug the mic in. It's my fault. It's not Ann's fault. It was my fault. I had to walk away to turn on the airbrush compressor and I didn't plug back in. So with that, welcome to another Tom Mass Transmissions Live. This is why we started three minutes early, so I could screw up and waste my extra time that I was going to use for hobbying today to fix a mic problem that was my own fault. We're doing great. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm excited to be here to paint my boy Cad Bane. I've been waiting for this for a long time. And today we're going to do something a little crazy. We're going to try, I'm going to try to kind of walk you through the new painting process that I've been using a lot. Uh, we're not going to get through the whole thing because it is a three-tiered media process. So we're going to use the airbrush. Then we're going to use some oil washes. And then I would finish up with some normal acrylics to do all of my like really bright highlights and stuff. Uh, my goal today for this hour is to get through the airbrushing process and the oil wash process. Uh, because really, once you get to the acrylics part, it's, it's very much like what we do on stream all the time, except the only thing that you're doing because of the first two processes is just doing extreme highlights and texturing. Uh, so this is a way that you can get stuff done really fast to a really great degree of like quality, uh, utilizing a mix of different proponents. And if you don't happen to have an airbrush, you can use a brush uh, for this first stage and then use the oil washes and then come back and, and use the normal acrylics again. Uh, your transitions are a little more tricky unless you're using like a high contrast paint method that works really well too. The airbrush just makes it go fast uh, for the most part, makes it quick and it's especially effective for batch painting. So if you're doing Legion and you want to paint a whole bunch of clones or a whole bunch of rebel troopers, you can knock through like squads within about three hours to a very high standard using this once you get comfortable with it. So with that said, we're going to get going. Uh, this is not my normal setup, so we'll see if we can not fumble around too much, but uh, we're just going to start. So. We have our Cad Bane. I've done the normal Zenith Prime highlight thing. Uh, this works really well for the airbrush because we're going to be using transparent layers. I've got a bunch of Pro Acryl paints for today. I'm going to be mixing these into, here comes Ann, so clearly we're out of focus or something. What's, what's happening here? Now i got a Dallas, my, everyone's in here, it's a party. <laughs> Um, left hand five minutes. This is not. This is not a game show. Sure, game show. Sure, 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 sure. All right. So my first step here is I'm going to take some airbrush thinner. I'm going to put a little bit into my cap. Then I'm going to take my paint. What did we lose, Dallas? Black tape. Oh, I haven't seen any black tape, my friend. Uh, we're going to just quickly drop her in some of that. We're gonna grab our brush. I'm gonna mix it straight in the cup. Now you can do this separately in a different cup and then pipette it in and all that stuff, but I don't do that because I feel like it takes forever and I don't usually have cups and stuff. So here we are. I'm gonna do a real quick test just to make sure my color's coming out well. Uh, this also, because I put the thinner in first, like, so lets me make sure that the thinner has run through. So now I'm getting paint and it's flowing kind of the way I want. Seems great. We're going to grab this guy. Where did you come from, brush? And we're just going to hit his pants. Woo, there. It's a little harder than I want. I'm going to turn down my PSI a little bit. So I'm going to go to about 20 PSI. There we go, there we go. We're just gonna knock this stuff in. Except for the moment, we're just gonna do everything in black. The reference kind of changes on his boots depending on what you're looking at, but just for simplicity's sake, we're gonna do the pants and the boots black and I can change those colors a little bit to be different, but I think that'll work out pretty well. And even if I decide that I want to go to something else, it'll be fine. Okay, so we're done with that color. Now what I want to do is I'm going to make a highlight color. So I'm going to take some of my white blue and I'm going to mix some of that into the airbrush. And this is why I like just mixing it in the airbrush. Um, I just have to be careful that I don't get any smudge in there or anything like that. Otherwise I'll get little clogs. My goal is to kind of mix up a nice highlight color. So we can see that that white blue really brought it up. And part of this method, because we're gonna use the oil wash and we're gonna use some subtractive painting, is you really wanna blow out those highlights. So you're gonna take this up to a, a level that is much higher than you normally would. And that's exactly the point. So now I'm just gonna very carefully come in 
and I'm just gonna let the airbrush do the work. And again, this is absolutely something that you could do with a brush, right? I'm just laying in my highlights. Um, but the airbrush makes quick work of it because I can kind of just let the natural property of the airbrush and the way that the paint layers on with its transparent layer because it's thinned out really quick. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna blow out some of that. I'm gonna add more of my blue white. I'm going to just go back and mix it up really quick. Make sure that it's gonna come out really nice. There we go. What's up, Ann? Probably just if you want to mix uh, over this, then we might be able to see you mix it. All right, I'll try. Okay? I'll try. You can try. I'll try. Just for them, not for you. Yeah. Just for them. So again, my goal here is to just do those extreme highlights. Less is more. So this is something that, much like brush control. Uh, with a traditional standard brush, you have to get really, really good at with the airbrush, and it just takes practice and repetition and kind of a feel for the brush, because every airbrush I've found works a little bit differently in terms of how its control and stuff is. Um, but we're just going to go in and hit those highlights. And at this point, I'm just going to slowly build up my layer because again, remember the paint is really thinned down, so it's gonna be pretty translucent uh, or transparent. And so the more layers I do, kind of like glazing, the brighter or the stronger those little highlights will get. And so already you can see we've got a pretty nice gradated black, but um, it's bordering more on the gray than it is the black. So this might be okay for you. I want, I want to go back to that black and get those black pants feels. And the way that I'm gonna do that is by using that oil wash to bring everything down after. So again, um, I can go much higher. I can kind of push those values much higher than I normally would if I was doing this with the brush or if I wasn't gonna go back with that oil wash because it's all gonna be subtractive. Okay, so with that done, uh, we're gonna clean out the brush and we're gonna do that with our little alcohol water mix. And I'm just going to blow it into this because that's how it works. And then I'm going to kind of put that stuff in, grab my brush, do a little mixing. And for the most part, it's okay if we're not completely clean on this part because the black's not going to worry about the brown but it is good. If you're switching colors and you don't want cross-contamination, um, you do want to think about, um, you do want to think about making sure that that brush is completely clean. I am not particularly worried about it. I'm gonna grab a little Q-tip really quick though, and I'll just do a quick little clean out. This is the excitement. Now we're happy with that. We're gonna move on to our next color. So, see if I can do this. Hopefully you can see that. Little bit, little bit of airbrush thinner. We're gonna to go to, uh, we're gonna do burnt sienna or mahogany. We're gonna go with mahogany first for the cloak. Yeah. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna do this where I can see it because I need to control how much paint goes in there. We're gonna hit that with that. We're gonna grab our brush. We're gonna do some mixing in the cup. Boop, 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 boop. Take a look at that. Make sure that it seems pretty nice. Feels pretty good. We'll do a quick little test. Blow out all of that stuff. It's coming out nice. And then we're just gonna go in. 
I'll start laying this on the cloak. The coat, I guess. It's not really a cloak. It's a coat. You see that it's spidery. It's spider webbing a little bit on me. So I can either add a little more paint or I can try turning down my PSI. Um, too much, a little bit more. There. Uh, so if your paint gets too thin, it will kind of spider web on you like that. No, gosh, it's so difficult. Um, so very light trigger and I can pull further back from my stuff. I'm gonna be kind of careful to keep it off the pants, but if I do get it on the pants, like I did a little bit of overspray here, that's okay. If I wasn't working for speed right now, um, I could do some masking or I could take like a piece of cardboard and kind of block off where I thought the overspray would be. Personally, I'm not super worried about the overspray though, because I feel like once I do the oil washes and stuff, we can kind of make it all meld together anyway. Uh, and any of these parts that say you don't feel comfortable doing with the airbrush or anything like that, um, you can just dive in and very, very easily uh, do the color with a, with a regular brush, right? So, for example, the, the face, I probably wouldn't do with an airbrush. I would just take a normal brush and lay in my colors that way. It would just be easier for me and where I am with my control and everything. So again, I'm just going to build with these colors. And I'm not looking for a completely opaque layer. I do want some of that. I do want some of that um, Zenith highlight to do some work for me. But this is going to be my darkest layer. The mahogany is where I assume the darkest layer is going to be. Get under the hat a little bit. Let me see. And this is why I'm going to paint that face with a brush. I'm just going to go brown over the whole thing because it'll just make some things easier for us. Okay. And then let's just say that I was like, uh, you know what? I think those boots want to be brown. I could just spray them brown right now if I wanted to, but I'm going to keep them black. Because that's the reference image that Ann pulled up for me, so I'm going to trust that we got the right reference, and we're just going to follow it. Okay, so we've got that going. And now what I want to do is I'm going to start making up a highlight, and I'm going to do that with any burnt sienna? No, we're just going to go straight to golden brown. So I'm going to pull some golden brown. Where do you want to go, water cup? You want to go over here. So I'm just going to drop some golden brown straight into my pot. And I do want this to come up pretty high. And then I'm going to start mixing. And I'm going to say, okay, that's pretty bright. So we'll give that a little test and see if it's too bright. We can always bring it back down with some other browns. But again, the goal with this technique is definitely paying to get a better light. Let's see. How's that? Is that better? Better light for the paint area? I don't know. Ann's kind of got to help when it comes to what works and what doesn't. So we're just going to come in with this golden brown mix. And we're going to start picking out the cloak. And again, it's all about building layers. So would you mind talking a little bit about uh, why some folks mix in the pot on an airbrush and why some folks don't do that? Uh, sure. So the reasons to not do what I'm doing right now, which is mix in the pot is that obviously when you're using air, any paints, and this includes airbrush paints, right? Um, they can have schmutz in them. They can have dried paint flex. They can have uh, other kind of like gunk. And so if you pour that straight into the pot, the problem is, is that you might wind up getting a clog and then you have to go through a clog. 
um, and fix that problem. So the smart way, if you don't, if you want to avoid that, right, is to take the time, pour it into a different pot, mix it, and then you can actually run it through a strainer, which um, there's a lot of different ways to make at-home strainers. I think the one that uh, was always famous from some of the painters that I talked to in Dallas, if you're gonna go through the process, is uh, you use some nylon and you put it over one of those plastic tubes that uh, you get with your paintbrushes. And that makes actually a pretty good like DIY strainer. Um, that takes longer, but it does give you a lot more control over the paint. It lets you see how it flows. You can use your brush to kind of paint over stuff. And so it lets you feel the paint flow a lot better. And if you say add too much thinner or you add too much paint, you can very quickly fix it in the pot before putting in the brush. When you put it into the brush directly, you save yourself some time, but of course you're opening yourself up to maybe getting some gunk in there, which will cause a clog. Um, you also have a little less control or fine tuning control over the paint. So, you know, realistically, um, you, want, you want to ideally be mixing that paint outside of the pot of the airbrush. Uh, especially if you're getting into like really fine detail, kind of like you're getting really tuned in or trying to do super delicate work or anything like that. Um, that said, like because of what I'm doing today and because we have a bunch of steps where we can kind of fix processes and problems and stuff, I'm not, I'm not particularly chuffed about, like I'm not worried about that. This works fine for me right now. Um, and it gives me enough control that I can like mess with it and we'll have enough time to do all the other stages of the process. So it's a bit of a time thing. The correct answer obviously is you know, do it correctly, put it out of the pot. It also allows you to mix colors better as well. You know, you do wanna be able to have more control of your mixes and everything um, when you do like random colors and, and all of that stuff. So you can just grab like a bunch of little metal reusable cups like this. They even make ones that are uh, not as tall, they're shallower. And those work really great. Um, if you don't wanna do a lot of like cleaning, you can use like the plastic, or not the plastic, the paper uh, ketchup cups that you see at like food, food stands and everything. You know, when you pump your ketchup into the little paper cup, those work really well and you can just toss those um, once you're done with the color. So there's a lot of ways to make that easier. You just kind of have to plan ahead a little bit and have it ready to go. Okay, that is done. I'm pretty happy with where we wound up with on our browns. I do want to... So one of the things I could consider here is like his interior is a little bit of a different color brown, so I might muss with that. There's also a very real possibility that you won't even notice because the coat is pretty... Um, is pretty closed, so we'll just see. That's something we can also fix during the third stage, which is our final revise or our revision stage. The only real question right now for me is do I like where my highlights are? Are they hot enough? Um, for what we're doing today and where we're going, I think that seems fine. So, uh, those asking about the delays to the This Party's Over and the Witches of Dathomir, the impending potential strike was definitely part of it. Like, there's other things in the chain as well, and obviously even concerns over shipping timelines and everything can affect stuff. Um, so just because it seems like we may have good news on that front and everybody's come to an accord doesn't mean that there aren't also things that have happened that have already set us back. But I have no doubt that Anne and the fine marketing team will let you all know as soon as they know anything and what to expect. It's always our goal to make sure that you all get stuff as soon as we can possibly give it to you. So no one's gonna hold those products back if they don't have to. So I'm just doing a real quick clean of my airbrush. The global logistics in general is always a challenge, but ever since, you know, 
the pandemic era and all of the nonsense that went along with the delays and the closures and everything else, uh, we still really haven't snapped completely back from that. It's miles better, and that's due in large part to the incredible work of all the people who are part of that industry. But, you know, it's like Dallas always said, if you can do X number of things a day and you lose X number of days, then that's X number of things that you have to catch up on. It doesn't increase the amount you can do per day. Okay, so that is a nice and clean airbrush. We're going to jump really quickly, not using that one, using this one, to our brush. And the reason we're gonna do that is because there are a couple elements, like I said, that I didn't want to do or could not do um, with the airbrush. Part of that is his Duros face. So I'm just gonna find some color here that makes me happy for Duros. Yeah, these are so blue. It's okay. He's pretty blue. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was talking about, you know, airbrushing and everything. It's, it's just like anything else, right? It's a whole process. It's a whole thing to learn. Once you kind of start to understand the airbrush and get better and better at it, um, it does unlock a ton of opportunity and potential, but you do have to get to that point first. Actually, I guess. And it's time. We're done with the airbrush. <gasps> Bloop! You better come in here and move the camera. I know. I know. You better make it happen. I'm just going to continue on his face, though, because I don't think anybody really needs to see this. because it's gonna be quick. And then he's got some fingerless gloves, so. And you're gonna keep him up here? We're gonna keep him up here. This is where he's gonna live for the rest of his life. That's right, this is it. This is the end of it. making all the gloves fingerless, but I think maybe he has one fingerless glove and one non-fingerless glove. That's crazy. This is when I have to go to our reference library and start looking at all the turnarounds and everything. I'd be like, what is happening here? The right one is for sure fingerless. Yeah, you can see the blue fingers, but is the other one fingerless? I don't uh, know. Yes, because you can see blue here and here. All right, perfect. So we, we did it right. We did it right. Success, everyone. Okay, and then let's see if I can find, oh, perfect, a metallic. Oh, goodness. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll get the gun, little blaster pistols. We'll get his crazy uh, breathing apparatus tubes, his two abs. going on. And so again, hopefully, this just kind of shows the fact that you don't need the airbrush to do this part. The airbrush just makes it a little faster and I like, and it makes the end effect a little easier to achieve because you can very quickly kind of get those highs and lows that you can then mess up. Hmm. 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 I'll just get these out really quick. Yes. Yes. Little gauntlets in their metal. And when you're doing uh, anything in metallic in this, you don't have to worry necessarily about doing a lot of different, you don't need to do a base coat and then follow it up with something else. You can absolutely just do the highlight, kind of like your mid-tone steel, and then the oil wash will take care of almost all of the shading and everything. So, so 
with metallics, I don't even bother with double layering anything. I just simply do my one base coat layer and then the oil wash takes care of like everything else. Uh, was this pose always the plan? Pretty much. Um, we we kind of always knew we were going with, well, we wanted to capture that classic like Cad Bane attitude, his, his, uh, I like the juxtaposition of his kind of old westerny like politeness, but also with his murderousness. So the, uh, we, you know, we wanted him to be blasting a fool. Uh, and from there, the conversation pretty quickly shifted to, okay, well, what's he doing as he's like shooting? And we felt it was just so appropriate and in line for the character to have him tipping his cap as he like takes down an opponent. So we didn't do a ton of exploration on, on CAD. We pretty much had it in mind and locked down fairly quickly. Um, there was some debate over the size of the hat, which I shut down very quickly because the only correct hat option is the giant hat. And so that's where we wound up on that, which, you know, obviously it's the best looking hat. But yeah, there, there just wasn't, there wasn't a significant amount of uh, exploration needed on this, this fella. Or a sing did have quite a few different iterations though, before we landed on the whole like kind of agile dodge back shooting, dual wielding at the same time. And I'm really happy with where that pose wound up. It's got a lot of great storytelling uh, and kind of fits, I think, the character a bit. She feels deadly, but she's also, you know, got kind of a different energy to her because she's on her back foot. It feels like she just kicked the table out from under somebody and is backing up as she blasts them. And then the bounty hunter supporting unit, that one had... Uh, the added challenge of we had to decide what races and what, you know, who these bounty hunters were, because they're just generic bounty hunters. So whenever we get to explore that, whenever you have kind of like a really open opportunity, it gets real fun because everybody kind of chimes in on which alien race or what kind of like style of character they want. We pulled ton of reference of a bunch of different species from the Star Wars galaxy and uh, you know from Rodians to Deveronians to Ithorians to, <laughs> to everything else I think somebody even mentioned an Ewok and I was like no no that doesn't work but kudos for trying uh, before we landed on our Shadra fan because we just loved the idea of this like small diminutive bat bounty hunter and uh, the Devronian who uh, you know they just have such a distinctive and cool look it was like well we should do we should do a Devronian and uh, that turned into one of the miniatures that I think Dallas Kemp loves the most because <laughs> that guy you look at that pose and that miniature especially in the way the pose was executed by the sculptors and the engineers he loves his job. Like he's just, I aspire to have the energy that man has every day. It's fantastic. And I know these things aren't metallic in the reference, but I make them metallic because I want to. Shh, don't censor me, man. Do what I want. Uh, yeah, you could probably fit Toto on Cad's base for sure. Toto is very small, um, so. I would imagine that we'll see some of that going on as well. And he was a, he was kind of an Easter egg ad that Dallas and the sculptors and engineers kind of did after the fact. So we had, uh, we had the characters all picked out and everything. And then they were like, well, what if we, because the Chadra fan had so much room on its base. Um, 
because you still want a 40 mil because that's the standard kind of quote unquote humanoid base in the game that the conversation began, well, what do we, what do we put around him? So we decided we'd give him a duffel full of credits, you know, whatever they've stolen or maybe it's his tools of the trade, who knows? Um, and, uh, and then the conversation became, well, we still have room. And they presented the idea of putting Toto 360 on there. And it's too good to pass up. So we got the little service droid on there. And I, I'm positive you could fit it on CAD's, on CAD's base as well. I'm going to, have I ever opened this paint? Oh, I did. OK, good. Big hat is the only way. He loves his hat. Um, I'm going to take some of this dark flesh color, and I just want to create a differentiation between um, the pouch and uh, the holsters really quick, because I've decided that I do want some. Well, you always want you always want some different combinations of brown because you don't want your browns to all be the same. You can do that, but it's more visually interesting if you can kind of like separate the different materials and stuff with some different colors. Now, the best part about this though, is that yes, I'm gonna base coat these colors. I'm gonna base coat these browns a little different, but we're only gonna use the same exact wash, same exact oil wash over both. And we're gonna get very different effects because um, our undercoat is going to matter a lot to that translucent wash and we're going to use some different colors for highlighting and all that good stuff. So even though this will take, well, I'm just going to have to redo that silver, whatever, it's fine. This is what happens when you change your mind halfway through. You know what? You said black boots, change my mind, go in brown boots. I'm a rebel. Can't stop me, Ann. This is the best part about just like flowing with it is that you can Readjust, readjust and change and do all that stuff. And now I'm off the reference, but I don't care. Forget the reference. I spent my whole life in the reference. Now we're off. Now we're just, we're wherever we want to be. If you're not careful, I'm going to start getting some magenta on this guy. I didn't bring any magenta, but I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. We'll get, we'll get Rave Bane, Cad Bane's unprofessional cousin. I'll just be like, I just travel the galaxy looking for the sickest of beats. That's all I'm here for. And then every once in a while he has to call up his brother Cad Bane and be like, look dog, I'm stuck on Rigel 7. Can I can I get some credits for a space bus ticket? Friggin' D in the Moss Eisley Cantina band. They're they're playing a gig in Tatooine. I need to get there. Some of that sweet space jam. for his gloves as well. Boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. How are we doing on time? Oh, I got 30 minutes. We'll get to that oil wash. <laughs> yeah, the night, I mean, like we kind of talked about when I was laying down those airbrush colors, right? The nice thing is, is that especially if you're working in, in similar tones, you know, browns or blacks or whatever. Just because you lay down a base coat of one doesn't mean that you can't suddenly change it to the other and you're just benefited by the fact that, you know, you're gonna get nice coverage over anything. So, it all works. Okay, and last but not least, let's go to our burnt sienna really quick.
something. this. And I still have to do his put black around his rebreather. But when I do this with a lighter color, like that. And it's underseated black maybe, but because we did the shirt that way, we're going to do this. I don't know. This is going to be our own Cad Bane. This is our Deviant Art Cad Bane Mini. Just feels like Cad Bane, kind of looks like Cad Bane, isn't strictly Cad Bane. Maybe his name is Cad Light. <gasps> Cad Bright. That's the name. That's the name. That's the name, Ann. Cad Bright. That's that's magenta colored Bane. Cad Bright. new to the um, the idea of oil washing if you were to feel like the miniature was too bright would that be something that would kind of bring it all back together so the oil wash as we're gonna see here in a second um, the really cool thing about oil washes is that they work in basically very similar properties to um, acrylic washes, but if you've tuned in for any of our oil explorations where we've gone off and done some wild oil painting, um, oil washes can be completely removed using white spirits or odorless paint thinner or whatever. There's a lot of different names for it, but it's kind of all the same stuff. Um, so that means that effectively you can lay on that wash as heavy as you want and then you can remove it with a lot of control. So with an acrylic wash where you kind of get stuck, you know, you put it on and you have to be very careful and you have to build it layer by layer or otherwise it just goes on super thick and you've ruined everything. Oil washing is subtracted. It's, it's subtractive. So you're going to put a, uh, oh, I, almost, I almost pulled the Simone there. You're going to put a lot, uh, you're going to put a lot of oil wash on the mini and then through the process you're going to remove as much as you want you can remove it from just the high high areas you can remove it from the low areas um, you have kind of complete control over the final effect and that's what makes them so effective and so fun and so powerful is the fact that um, you do have all this control, and even after they dry, if you take white spirits um, or mineral spirits, depending on where you're located in the world, because they're called like 5,000 different things, um, you can actually continue to erase or pull them off. So um, they're a really flexible and really powerful thing. The other really neat thing about them is that you can turn them into pin washes, which we've done a little bit before on stream and you basically just tap them to the mini and it all of a sudden like what is up with his hat is that does he have metal on his hat does this hat have like metal bands i'm not doing that that seems ridiculous i don't know where you got this reference in but we're gonna have a talk afterwards um this is this is just it's not okay um so you can turn it into pin washes because uh it thins down super well and it'll actually run through capillary so what, Simone Elliott? You're not here. Stop judging me. I didn't do it. I didn't pull a Simone Elliott. I can't get away with pulling a Simone Elliott. That's the real problem. Otherwise, I totally would. Totally would. Um, okay, and then the last thing is we need to do his red Duro size. Ball crimson will work perfectly fine. Boop. Maybe, maybe it won't. Oh, you stole my poker. Where'd the poker go? You did. You were like, what's that? And then I, I said, what is it? And you picked it up. And, you put and then I put it away. I put it away out of sight of the camera because it felt like it had offended you. 
And there it is. It was under the hair dryer. It's fine. We're good. Boom. Maybe, maybe there. Oh, 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 perfect. Okay. Uh, so if you work with dropper bottles, it's always good to get one of these little push pins that you can get from any craft store. They make great uncloggers. quick one to come in here. And I'm going to try to do these eyes. Oh, this is a really odd angle. Close enough. Close enough. Whatever. It's fine. We'll fix it in post. Okay. Uh, so at this point, we have gotten basically all of our Base coat's on. We have our highlights, which we built with the airbrush. So we've got some nice gradations, some differentiation of values, all that good stuff. We went way high. We do have some overspray here and there, but I kind of like it because it's a little like dirt and stuff like that. Doesn't matter. Um, so let's switch gears. So we're gonna put away the acrylics. We're gonna go to step two. Uh, step two is gonna be our oil washes. So on the palette, uh, I have some ivory black, which is right here. I have um, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and some Prussian blue. Use whatever colors you want. Uh, the colors you want to pick are based on the colors of the mini. So because we're doing mostly browns and blacks and all that stuff, I know that's where I want to go. So I'm going to start with my ivory black. I'm going to create a black wash. And effectively, I'm just going to pull in mineral spirits or white spirits. And my goal here is to create my wash. Now, what I'm looking for is a wash kind of like this. So if I put it to the side, um, it sticks. It's got a little transparency to it, but for the most part, it's still pretty thick. And this is like one of the important bits here. If I was trying to make a pin wash, what I'd be looking for is for the paint to flow. So you see how when I touch it there, it kind of like it droops down a little bit. It flows. That's what I want out of a pin wash. Because I want the pin wash to only run into the edges. So that's a very thin, more of like a traditional kind of acrylic wash. The oil wash, I just want it to be more like a glaze, but a strong glaze. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go all over the spots that I want to be black, which means our pantalones. And oh, I'm of course gonna do our metallics as well, because that makes sense. Now what I could do, and this is where it starts to get really fun, is let's just say I want the metallics to stand out a little bit differently from the black of my cloth. I could mix some Prussian blue into my black to create a chromatic black. That would then give a blue steel. Or maybe I want the steel to have a bit of green to it or a bit of red to it or whatever. Whatever you want to have happen, you can do that through kind of color mixing your little washes. And you'll see that I'm getting pretty thick with this. Um, and it's because, again, we're going to go through that subtractive process. So once we get to kind of the end stage of this demonstration, because we won't finish the full process, unfortunately, um, where we go to the acrylics, we're going to have removed whatever amount we want. So we can, again, be pretty liberal. Uh, with this. And I think today is the first day that I am now realizing the consistency of a glaze versus a wash, but using almost like a foodstuff comparison, like okay, the okay. difference between teriyaki, which is what that looks like, and soy sauce. Yeah, that no, that's that's actually it's that's pretty good. Yes, uh, teriyaki 
traditional like you know teriyaki is a is a food glaze, right? It's a it's a thick sauce that coats, and soy sauce is more of a very thin, yeah, kind of thing. So it's not bad. It's not bad. I like it. But also, don't eat the paint. Ah, uh, <laughs> true, true. Very good life lesson right there. Don't eat the paint. Very, very important when you're using oil washes. Do not eat the oil washes at all. Um, that will that will go so poorly that you, you just just don't even don't bother. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. It's not worth it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna clean off my brush really quick. So we have our flat color down. Um, we're going to go to our brown next. So I'm going to take some of this burnt umber. I'm going to actually take a little bit of the blue just to really punch it down. And give it kind of a nice dramatic feel. So the red and the blue, so this has a bit of red in it, a bit of blue in it. Uh, red and blue, obviously, blue shades red really well, blue shades everything really well, but it definitely interacts very well with uh, reds. So it's a great way to kind of tone that down. And we're gonna go over our cloak here. I keep calling it a cloak. It's a coat. Why? Why is it a cloak today? I don't know. Just because it's, it's where I, it's where my head is at. It's where I'm feeling. I'm feeling like I want my Cad Bane in a cloak for reasons that I can't explain. Um, important to note that this technique, if you wanted to speed it up even more, works amazing. If you just do a black oil wash over the whole thing, so you could just say, I'm not going to do chromatic colors or make my choices based on the colors that I'm covering, I'm just gonna do black. Um, and obviously black is a natural shade to everything, so it'll give you some really strong shadows and that'll help build your highlights and your contrast and all that stuff. Give you some good values across the mini. So you can 100% do that and it'll work great. Uh, we did the hat the same color as the coat. Oh, I said coat this time, I'm getting better. So I'm going to just use the same color. Now I could use a different oil wash if I wanted to change my overall tone and values of my colors, but we'll just make the coat match the hat. I think that'll be fine. Um, but, whoa, we're breaking everything. A duster, that's true, it is a duster, because he's a gunslinger. You got me there. You got me there. Is a duster a cloak or a coat, though? Like, which which family does a duster fall into? Because now these are the important questions you've got to ask yourself. So I'm going to pull a little bit of black. Soften this down. So we want to keep this more ruby. So you see how my, my washes here hopefully are, are very different in terms of their overall value and like where they sit. So we've got more red. This is going to go over my more red um, leather to keep it kind of like warm and nice. We've got kind of our more green brown, which went over the duster. But by utilizing all of this, we're gonna come up with some really nice looking variations on the color, but we're gonna maintain everything the way that we want it to be, which is mostly like leathers and things like that. So, we'll just play in the zone that we got. And if we ever decide that we don't like something or we want it to be darker, we even have the opportunity at this stage, because we're working with oils and they stay wet for a while, to go in and let's say add some black. So maybe, or some darker color. So maybe we're, we're not feeling the fact that 
you know, this oil wash here, it's just not dark enough. We want some more contrast. And you come over to our black, or we could grab an entirely different color and we could work some in. So maybe we just add some black wash over here, darken up these areas right here, kind of meld them around. You can mix directly on the miniature. Now he's looking, let's be honest, he's looking like a mess. We took a miniature that almost looked done to a certain extent. Uh, he looked, you know, he looked pretty, he looked pretty tabletop ready. And we've now just slathered, slathered him with all this stuff. Um, and you might think to yourself, oh my gosh. Now, if you did this with acrylic paints, you would feel real bad because that 30 minutes of prep work would be ruined. There's no coming back from this with acrylic washes. He only comes with one hat because there's only one hat that's correct. And it's the big hat. Uh, and I need to go back to my black one for now. So, slap it over this, and then over this. Now, you can uh, leave your oil wash to dry for a while, uh, if you want to, because remember, again, you can, using white spirits, erase everything that you've done with enough time and patience. Uh, so all of this can come off. We can go back to start if we take our time and work at it. Our goal is not to do that. Our goal is to utilize uh, the properties of the oil wash to remove only the wash from the highest areas, thereby creating natural shading and giving us kind of a good little base tone. Um, so from a time perspective, the ideal here is to like walk away for about 20 minutes. 10 minutes can work, um, but the longer, like 20, 20 to 30 minutes, maybe 40, it depends on how much white spirit you used, all that stuff. That's gonna take you to the ideal standpoint where you're not gonna be able to pull off all of it, even if you try really hard, um, but you're gonna be able to pull off most of it. We don't have that kind of time to sit around. So with that in mind, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go, gonna go in right away, which you can do, but you have to be aware that when you do it this way, um, that paint is still really wet and, and it's, not, it's not stained. It's not done anything yet. So you have to have a pretty light touch. Um, so know that if you do it properly, you should wait for about 20 minutes, let the white spirit start to evaporate, and then go in with your dry Q-tips or makeup sponges or whatever you have handy. I'm gonna be using Q-tips today because that's what I have and they work perfectly fine. And you're just gonna start um, by very lightly going over and pulling off the wash. Now, if you've done a couple different colors, you should make every effort to only hit the areas that are the same wash color. Because if you don't, uh, your oils will start, to, will start to mix. Now you can use this to your advantage you can actually blend and mix colors on the mini while the oil wash is still wet. And you can do that by using a clean brush or a Q-tip or whatever else. That's basically the principles of painting with oils. And you use oils to the way they go. So then are you switching uh, so, between the different sections into a different Q-tip? So, what I, so the, the way that I approach it, now you can do that. The way that I approach it is I just grab a Q-tip and I work on one area. And then when I'm done with that area, so like right now, my goal is to just do the black. So anywhere I did a black oil wash, that's where I want my Q-tip primarily to go. Um, if you're using these cotton Q-tips, which is all we have in the office, you will get a little couple of like fuzzies and stuff. Yeah, the sponges that are on sticks like Q-tips are honestly the best. Now. They make me feel the saddest because they're kind of the most like plastic and wasteful. Um, they don't, you know, but they are absolutely the best for this, uh, this process because they give you the most control and they don't leave little fuzzies. You don't have to worry about the little fuzzies though because they do come right off if you pluck at them. So like once the, once the oil wash is dry, wherever you see a fuzzy, you can kind of just pull it off and it comes right off. It doesn't get like glued on. Uh, it's not like having a fuzzy on there when you do a prime or when you do a uh, an acrylic of any type, right? 
So you can see, hopefully you can see how the more I go over an area, the more I erase it. So for example here, I want this to be really clean. I can just continue to work at it, and the more I work at it, the more I pull that wash off. So the brighter it comes back. Um, when it comes to like the tubes, maybe I just do that, I do that. So you're, you're really sketching your highlights back in. And it is just, it's just a subtractive process. And the great thing about it is, is that if you're gentle with it, right, the Q-tip can only hit, or your little like makeup sponge or whatever, will only hit the top areas. So already the wash will stay in the recesses because you can't get to that as easily. And the highlight areas will just become more and more brighter. They'll return to their initial form. Again, it's the same principle, it's the same idea going on here as using an acrylic wash and acrylic glaze. But the difference is, is that with those acrylics, you can't pull them off afterwards. So you have no control once they're on. And you have a very, very limited time to go in and fix anything that you would consider, quote unquote, a mistake. <gasps> no, Cad Bane, your arm. No. It's all right. We're just gonna keep going. Shh. You can have some surgery later. People in Star Wars lose their arms all the time. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so this gives you so much flexibility and control. And if you start to get really good at it, um, what you can do is you can determine where your light source is, and then you can start, you can only clean that way. So let's say I decide that my light source is coming this way on the mini. So I want all of my light and highlights to be this way. If I only clean this way, if I make sure all of my strokes are this way, I will naturally get dark down here and light up here. So very quickly and very easily, I can create really impressive and really good looking light, uh, Zenith light sources and other things like that because of how I control where the wash comes off and how that stuff works. Um, it's, it's a fantastic technique. I wish I'd known about it so much earlier. Um, and it's powerful on its own. Like by the time that we're done with this stage here, we could just be like, okay, we're done. Like we're great. Let's leave it alone. But when you combine it with that final finishing stage where you go back in and then you start adding the little texture marks and the little extreme highlights and everything, it becomes this tool that allows for almost professional looking results, like studio level results, without a lot of the back and forth the, you know, the really dedicated um, highlighting and shading and blending and all that stuff because the oils do so much of that work for you and the control that you have over the final piece, over the final look, over the final paint job is so, so powerful. Um, and it just works super well. See, I got my fuzzy there. I need to switch my thing. Now, we've seen, you know, this has just been, again, this has just been with a clean Q-tip. So this is just how much you can erase with a clean Q-tip. The more you do it, the more you can pull off. Let's say, for instance, we really want the edge of this hat to be beautifully, beautifully highlighted. So we want to pull all the oil wash off that. Once you finish this portion, you can come back, you can take your Q-tip, you can dip it in white spirits. Remember, white spirits will erase everything, oil that it touches. It won't hurt your acrylics, but it will completely take off your oil wash. And using that white spirits, we can really get in there and erase any of that wash that we don't want. Let's say we want, we want this calf to really shine. It's all gone. Right? Look, all gone. It's completely back to where we started. Uh, and so you want to be careful with this, right? It's a lot of power in that little Q-tip of that white spirits because you're just going to pull it all off. But you can 100% do that. And this is another level of control that allows you to go in and create those highlights subtractively because you already did that work. Like maybe right here, I want that edge to be really bright. Now it's really bright right? Um, maybe I put wash in a place that I don't want. Like all of a sudden I can just pull that off. Use the white 
for the most part, my suggestion is having done this quite a bit, is only use the white spirits as, a, as that final spot. Um, only do that in spots where like you really want it to shine or you want a really glossy metallic or anything like that. For the most part, using the dry Q-tip is more than enough because all you have to do is just keep working at it with the dry Q-tip. It's really hard, it can be a lot harder, especially as you're starting out with this technique, to control the white spirits and make sure that you're not stripping off too much. Like even down here, I feel like I went too far with that white spirits because it kind of crept away from me. So I'm gonna go back in after this and I'm gonna do my wash. But again, like I think this is too dark. I come in with a dry Q-tip and I just, and I can be pretty rough with it. Now, do you need to varnish before you do this? Depends on who you ask. Uh, I don't, and I've had no problems. Like white spirits does not interact with acrylic. It doesn't at all. Um, it, white spirits doesn't have a chemical reaction with anything but oil paints when it comes to like the acrylics. The acrylics are really tough. They will be fine. The, so it's not about protection. Now the argument is, is that if you do a, if you do a varnish over the, over the acrylics first, you can get the oils to flow better and I think like for me, what I've found is that if I'm gonna do a pin wash or if I'm gonna do a lot of pin washing and I want the oil to really flow in the crevices and only the crevices, doing a semi-gloss varnish first does make it flow better because it removes, it removes some of the tooth that the acrylic has that can mess with the capillary action of the pin wash. But when it comes to this technique here where we're just doing the wash and we're cleaning it off with the Q-tips, you don't need to varnish. I've, I've never had a problem with it. Um, and it works just fine. So that's my take. You can always varnish. It is, you know, there are people who swear by it. There are other people who say you don't have to bother with it because again, the white spirits does not interact with the acrylic. Um, test it out, do it the way you want. Obviously, uh, I'm looking for speed here. So having to stop the process, seal it, wait for that to dry, come back to it. That's not my life. You know, when I get to sit down at the painting table in between baseball practice and after school activities and jujitsu and whatever else the kids have going on, plus cooking dinner, plus doing everything around the house, you know, and maybe once in a while, like hanging out with my wife when we can just be adults together. I don't, I don't have time or I don't have the flexible schedule to do that. So if I get my two hours, I want to sit down and I want to maximize those two hours. And this, this kind of like mixed technique media has been huge for that. And it's really opened up my ability to achieve results that I wanted to achieve, but were taking too long to achieve. And it's fun. It's really fun because it's so flexible and there's so much to explore uh, and everything else. And I've been very excited to kind of learn it. Uh, if you want to look up more of this, there are plenty of people who are experts at it that I learned from. They're on you know, YouTube and everywhere else. Um, so just look up oil washes as a start. Um, and you'll start to find a whole new world for this stuff. And it's very easy to get into. It's very inexpensive to get into because you just need a couple of, like really you need black and brown oil, oil paints and some white spirits and you can do a lot of the stuff right out of the gate. Uh, so this is where we ended up. Now what would happen is, is that I would walk away for 15 minutes, grab a coffee or a drink, I would come back. And by that point, assuming that I'd waited the 20 minutes before I started doing my subtractive stuff, so about an hour after applying the wash, you're pretty much good to go um, with starting to put acrylics on. So you can start with the acrylics pretty fast right away. Um, it's gonna be based on how much mineral spirits you put, how dry your oils do, but your oils don't have to be completely dry to be able to dive in and start picking out those highlights and stuff. Um, so again, it's, you can leave it overnight to dry and come back to it if you have that availability, but if you just have a certain amount of time, you wanna dive in and do it, you can do it. Um, but there it is. So that is two parts of the three-part technique for the mixed media, which is airbrush, oil wash, and then acrylic finish. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed stuff, maybe learned a thing or two or inspired to try it out. I've been loving it. I would love to see what results you all can get out of it. Again, plenty of experts, so much great resources that we have now as hobbyists with the internets and all of these fantastic artists who share all of their magical uh, spells with us, all of their wizardry. So don't be afraid to go out, give things a try. You might find something that you really love. You might even develop your own technique that you can share with us later. 
Be sure to tune in tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific. Dallas Kemp's going to be on. I believe he's painting a Mace Windu. Uh, so if you want to see Master Mace Windu get painted, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it's true, but that was what was on the schedule when I looked. So, you know, who knows? Uh, go ahead and take that out. Otherwise, watch the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever else we do stuff on. I don't know. Ann's adding things all the time. Maybe we have a TikTok now. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, we don't. Wow, that was really authoritarian. Like, we don't. Fine. No clockwork app for us. Um, but till then, I've been Will. You've been great. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much. And, oh, important to note, no streams, uh, no hobby streams next week because we will be heading to Gen Con. So watch for the special announcements for the couple of special things. More special. All the special. It's special. Gen Con's special. We're special. You're special. Have a special day. Goodbye. Special goodbye. Bye, everybody.